So I read the Jurassic Park novel for the very first time and the differences between the book and the movie blew my mind. Now admittedly, I've never been one for reading, so I've never really read any major books since I read the Goosebumps books as a kid. But the Jurassic Park movie changed my life when I saw it in the theater for the first time as a kid. And I figured if I'm going to start reading anything, this is where I'm going to start. Now when it comes to the book, it didn't take me long to realize that this is a lot more gruesome than the movie. Which makes sense, you know, Steven Spielberg needs to make this a family friendly movie if he's going to build a franchise off of it. So a lot of the gory stuff in the book had to be cut out. Now, the gory stuff I rather enjoyed when a dinosaur attack happens, it's not going to be something off screen where you got to use your imagination. They talk vividly about limbs tearing, guts being spilled out into your hands, the ripping of flesh as the claw gets torn down your back. I mean, this book was so detailed that I was wondering if this was a horror book. And I'm not trying to insinuate it's a horror book because it's not. I'm just meaning the detail in the blood and the gore is substantial to that of the movie. But it makes sense. It's more realistic that way. They're dinosaurs. They're going to be vicious. They're going to rip limbs and flesh and blood's going to squirt and guts are going to fall out and things like that. I rather enjoyed that. That's a change that made me smile. Now, the characters. I was surprised in the differences on just the characters. Mainly Hammond. Now, in the movie, he is just this bubbly, likable old guy who's just out to build a park of dinosaurs to bring smiles to kids and families. And he just, I don't know, the way he goes about it, you can't help but love him. But in the book, he is a strict, cutthroat business guy who just wants to make money. He wants to build this park. He doesn't care who he hurts, what he has to go through, who he has to lie to, what has to be done to get this park up and running so that he can make money. Basically, he's an asshole. And as the book goes on, you dislike him more and more and more. And he almost becomes like the villain of this book. So that is one of the biggest changes I've noticed. And I, in the book, I like that more about Hammond. I just think it fits the story more. Now, I understand why they changed it for the movie, but I like the book version more. Dr. Grant. His character is pretty much the same, at least the way I interpreted it. In the movie, he doesn't initially like kids. Now, I know toward the end of the movie, he's kind of taken a liking to Tim and Lexi and he's helped them out. But he's very upfront with not liking kids in the beginning of this film. Now, the book is just the opposite. He really likes kids, and he likes teaching them and things like that about dinosaurs. So that was also a change from the book to the movie. Sadler, her character, I feel, unless I overlooked something, is pretty much the same as the movie. It was depicted almost exactly the same. I like her character, um, so I'm kind of glad that they didn't change anything there. Dr. Malcolm, I, after reading this book, Jeff Goldblum was the perfect choice for Malcolm. He brought the sarcasm and the fun to this character. That is one big pile of shit. Now, there were slight differences, but I think the most important thing is what they kept the same. And that was uh, his calculating mentality. The way he always looks at things in a very calculated manner. The way he describes them. Um with such philosophy and almost a butterfly effect of how things happen. So I think Jeff Goldblum really captured that character well. The only difference is he wasn't so much a, a lover of kids the way he was in the movie. In the book, he's just very, I don't know, he's very flat. He doesn't really care too much about kids. He doesn't, it's not really brought up. It's just, he is there to prove a scientific or theory that, you know, Basically, life finds a way. But life uh, finds a way. I mean, there are quotes directly from the book of Dr. Malcolm that go you know, into the movie. So I think Jeff Goldblum did this perfectly. He portrayed that character almost to a T. Now, I also want to touch on Tim and Lexi. In the movie, Lexi was the older, 
of the siblings. Tim was the younger, more annoying one. And I feel both of them had strengths. Timmy was the dinosaur guru. He was always into that. He was a big fan of Dr. Grant. Lexi was a bit of a computer sports nerd. In the book, it was kind of flopped in the sense that Timmy was the older sibling and Lexi was a very annoying young one. And the only thing I had quarrels with here is that Timmy, um, he was basically, he knew everything. He, he knew dinosaurs, he knew computers, he knew everything he had to know about everything. Lexi, we, we could have done without her in the book because she was just an annoying, nagging younger sister who I feel like she was there just to fill a couple pages and I, I just didn't really resonate with that character in the book. So I'm glad that at least in the movie, they both had something to contribute in the book. It was all Tim and Lexi was just annoying. Of course, that's just how I'm interpreting it. So I would love anyone else's input as we go along here. So those are our main characters. I don't want to flood the video with oh, with every character in the book because we'd be here all day. But as far as the scenes go, the storylines concerned, I noticed there are bits and pieces from the original trilogy, the first, second, and third movie that are all in the the novel, the first book, and that kind of surprised me in a good way because the opening scene from the Lost World movie where the girl's on the beach with her family and she runs into the, a compi and it ends up being a group of them and they end up attacking her. That is the opening scene for the book, the original book. So I was like, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? That's part of the second movie. Like, we got this in the book. So I feel like they really broke that book up into the original trilogy. So in the book, it's initially like, we don't know Jurassic Park exists yet. We're trying to find out why this kid got attacked by this lizard that's kind of unidentifiable at the moment. Where did it come from? So a lot of things get looked into before we even realize Jurassic Park's a thing. And I love the build up there. I love the way they told that story in the beginning of searching out this strange lizard. Where did it come from? And we gotta find other researchers and doctors to help figure this thing out. And, then we get into what we know as the movie. And just the way they introduce the whole story, especially with Dr. Sadler and Dr. Grant, I really enjoyed it way more than the introduction to the movie. And the further I got into this book, the more differences I noticed. There are scenes, like there's a huge river scene in this book that is not in the movie whatsoever, where Grant and the kids are drifting on this river and the T-Rex is trying to get at them from the shoreline and it's a huge section of the book that is just phenomenal the detail is absolutely incredible i enjoyed reading every bit of that and i wish that scene was in the movie i really do and there are other scenes like that and there are parts that we recognize with the movie there are iconic scenes in the movie that are are in the book but they may have been played out by different characters. So I won't spoil that right now, but I'm just saying that some of the scenes that I remember as a kid that are iconic to me that when I watched the movie, I read that same part in the book and was like, wait a minute, a different character did this. Why is this one doing it? But when reading the book, it all made sense. It made sense to me why this character was doing it instead of that one. And I was intrigued. I was really overwhelmed by the, the storytelling of Michael Crichton in this book. And it was absolutely amazing. And as I said earlier, one of the biggest things that differentiate this book from the movie is the fact that this book is gruesome. I mean, it is detailed when it comes to dinosaur kills in the essence of they are describing how the claw is ripping the flesh open, guts are spilling out, and just to, to visualize that when I'm reading it, just things that you didn't see in the movie, like, oh, we saw a kill, but it was like off screen, and you just kind of heard it, and you kind of had a picture it in your head, but to actually read it verbatim, what's being ripped apart, how the flesh is tearing, it was like, wow, I did not expect this. By the time I got to the end, I realized that the ending of the book and the end of the movie were completely different. There is nothing the same about the ending of the book and the movie. There are scenes in the movie that were never in the book. Spoiler alert right now. The end battle 
I'll give you a chance to, to pause, fast forward, whatever. The battle between the T-Rex and the Raptors at the end, and they're all fighting in that lobby with the skeleton T-Rex dangling, that is not in the book at all. And I'm glad because there is something much better in there. Things happen to certain characters that had me cheering. There are certain things that happen to characters that had me upset. There are people that die in the book that didn't die in the movie, and people that survived in the book that didn't survive in the movie. It was all jumbled up in a great way and let me just say i understand why books are so much different than movies now because if they'd have made this movie just like the book it probably would have been a four-hour movie it would have been great but i understand they had to condense it down and i understand some of the changes that had to be made because they wanted this to be a family-friendly movie and franchise that was starting and i get all that so Changes had to be made, but I'm telling you right now, that book was absolutely incredible. Now, I will say this. Now that I've discovered the power of the book, I'm going to have to do more videos like this comparing the book to the movie. And if you have any suggestions, I want you to put it down in the comments. Also, fill in the gaps for me. Is there anything I misinterpreted reading this book? Anything I may have talked about that didn't quite sound right or characteristics of other characters in the book? Because, honestly, this is the first time doing this, the first big book I'm reading, and I want to make sure I've got my bearings straight. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Please do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe button on your way out if you haven't already, and I'll see you at the concession stands.